Patriana, Lord God, and everything goes smooth with that. Thank you for, Father God, we're just, we rejoice in you, Lord God, because you provided salvation and peace and love and joy. And, oh God, so much more than we can even imagine, Lord. You are all those things to us today, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your peace over this place right now, God. Father, I pray that our minds and our heart will be cleansed with your word. I pray that our desire, God, will be you and you alone. Hallelujah. We're not even thinking about the football game this afternoon, Lord. We just wanna, we're just thinking about you. We're thinking about, we're not thinking about the bills that need to be paid or the, nothing, God. We're thinking about you this morning. Am I calling you out now? Hallelujah. I'm not thinking about my hurt, my body. I'm thinking about you, Lord. I'm not thinking about anything else, God. Because your word tells us to cast all our cares upon you and you care for us. So this morning, we just physically cast them all to you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. I say hallelujah because it's black and I don't want to say it, so that's why I say it. So. <laughs> hallelujah. I've been doing it since I started preaching, so it's, when I went to Bible college, they, would, they say, don't say that so often. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, so I just want to say hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Glory to God. Don't get me started. <laughs> Glory to God. Church is supposed to be fun. You know, when I we had Tina and I were children's pastors for a long time, so when the kids came into the room, we wanted it to just be fun. You know, fun church would be fun because I don't want to make it a burden like rules and regulations and you know all that mean stuff. I wanted to be happy to be in church. So I want the same thing for you guys. <laughs> Hallelujah. That, and Pastor Andrew mentioned that our the movement and, and the Assembly of God started in 1941 when he said we are going to have a week of prayer, and that was a, a significant change because it actually our, our the founding of our movement started with prayer. Uh, Zusa Street Revival, you could read about it. Uh, Brother Seymour was uh, a black African uh, fear God fearing man that was full of the Holy Spirit, and people just moved uh, his. Staff were filled with the Holy Spirit. They would go out in the streets and people would be healed and hundreds would come to Jesus and they would pray for hours and hours together as a, as a team and as a, as a ministry team. It was just amazing and that's how where the Pentecostal movement started in, in, in America. And and we, we're part of that heritage. That's part of who we are. And that's why missions are so important to us and that's why we give so much and how God just provides for us. The word of God to be spread throughout the whole world. Amen. That's what, what our movement is. It's not about, it's about the local church encouraging us to do greater things in ourselves, right? <laughs> and it's about us as a local church to be encouraged to win our lost loved ones and our neighbors and our friends to Jesus. It's about accepting those that don't feel acceptable anywhere else. They come into a, a family of believers and, and they're accepted because we have a father that is the father of all people. God, our Heavenly Father. We're all included in that. Amen? We're brothers and sisters. And I love that part of God. I love that we're all included in His family. And, and whatever sin that we have or whatever problems we're going through, He's equally going to take care of it for everybody. Nobody is, He's not a respecter of anybody. We're all equal in His eyes. We're His sons and His daughters. He loves you and me in a way that we can't even explain it. I can't explain it to you in a natural how. I, I love my children. I love my grandchildren. Uh, um, I love when they come up and they want to be with me on Sunday morning and dance up here. I'm not a good ballet teacher, but, uh, you know, I know somebody that, you know, so I just tell Isabella, I said, just dance, you know. She just like, loves the music and dance. I think she likes to show off to a little bit, but that's okay. You know, she'll get all right in her heart as she grows into God. But it's a freedom to let her express herself in loving God, amen, and that's what we want to do. So praise the Lord. Um, part of part of one of the things that they did, they wanted uh, the state of the Holy Spirit revival throughout the world started it, through uh, through the Pentecostal movement. Um, one of the things also they said is that the Pentecostal power was given for all the workers and all the us as witnesses. That's what we prayed and believed, and we're going to continue to pray that. So we pray that the Holy Spirit move revival goes throughout the world. That was one of the things they prayed for. The second thing they prayed for all the workers, all the people in the ministry would be full of the Holy Spirit, and that they would be able to do work for God. 
And, and also, um, and I changed the wording on this a little bit, but it, they also wanted people to follow Jesus with all their heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. Amen? They wanted Jesus to be real in everybody's lives. That's what's part of the prayer. And we can pray the same thing. I added one more thing. We want people, it, and Jesus said that in Matthew 28, that we are to be the, his disciples, right? So, and the disciple is one that is a learner and follower of Jesus. Would you agree with that? Right? We're all disciples. We should be disciples, right? But Jesus didn't leave it there. It's not that we just give it for ourselves and we give it away. That was so powerful in our movement is that we give it away. So we're not only supposed to be disciples, we're also supposed to make disciples. Can everybody say amen to that? Amen. 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 So it, it's not just the pastor, Pastor Andrew's responsibility to make disciples. It's like everybody in this room today is responsible to make disciples. Or we can say easily, make new followers of Jesus, right? So we say, win the loss. Well, we can say, win the loss by discipling them to be a follower of Jesus. Is that a good definition? I can put a t-shirt on that, right? Win the loss. <laughs> yeah, it's a too long for a t-shirt. Um, but win the loss so they follow Jesus and that they would make disciples of Jesus. Amen? So we, when we pray, we're praying for that. We're praying that you, everybody in this room, would understand the responsibility as a disciple maker. Amen? And I, I think we're getting there, right? My, my joy is that I see that happening where people are sharing and giving testimony. And, and uh, I'm just excited about that. Uh, I'm just excited, period. <laughs> <laughs> it's a call for us to focus on God's will and priority for us as individually and collectively as we pray together. Amen? It's a call for us to not only focus on God's will and His priorities for us individually, right? Because God has a calling on most of your lives, right? Yes. Except for me. So yeah. like, so most of us have, like, a calling on our lives. And we're praying that you just listen and follow that. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not, a, it's, we're not church attenders. It's not in the Bible. We're, we're disciples and followers of Jesus, and we're all called to do something, amen? And God's calling you to do something. And I, we're praying that you, that God reveals that through His Holy Spirit, amen? Uh, uh, past this week of prayer, I believe that every Christian should practice prayer daily. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I, was thinking, should I, should, I was thinking about this morning. I said, should I tell you that you should pray daily? I don't want to be like a rule. Read your Bible and pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. That's what you teach the children, right? That's true. It's like a true statement, right? So when you read your Bible, you hear the mind and the will of God, and it cleanses your mind from the stinking thinking that we have about the stuff that's going on in our world. And we begin to have the mind of God, and we get to act in wisdom and with intelligence. Uh, and we'll actually move by the Spirit to, to take care of our situation. So I say, I would say, well, we need to pray daily. Uh, every day. Can I encourage you to do that? I'll have encouragement today, right? Pray daily. Now, I could say, get up earlier and spend a half hour before you go to work. Put, give God the first part of your day. Make it a priority to put Him first. Be first thought before you take a cup of coffee or before your feet hit the floor. Pray and God, your day will be perfect if you do that. That's a lie. But I'm just telling you, <laughs> It's not, it might not be perfect, but you know that the, the reliance on God when we pray is that He will be with you through your day. And whatever that day brings, He's going to be there with you. And you're going to be even alert to His uh, presence in your life. And that makes it a lot easier, right? So you can smile through the traffic jams, or you can smile through the hiccups at work, or, you know, you got the kids ready for school, and all of a sudden they had the wrong shoes on, or they have a, you know, something happens, you know, and, and you get, it start, your day starts off wrong, it starts off um, a little exciting, and so then you say, you know, but I believe God, if you just, when you open your eyes, and you say, thank you for this day, yeah. right, before your feet hit the floor, I do this often because I'm gonna, my body's kind of in some pain, so I don't jump out of bed. Uh, so I just lay there for a few minutes and thanking God for whatever is going to yeah. be next, right? Because I don't, I, I just want His presence with me, right? And so we pray. And then I, I have the privilege of having extra time in the morning to pray. So most of you are off to work, so you don't do that. But you can pray continuously, right? The Bible says pray continuously, pray while you're working. Just when you're driving, just I have one caution. Just keep your eyes open, okay? <laughs> I mean, don't pray with your eyes closed because it could 
cause <laughs> that could be so that could be bad. But uh, but pray continuously. And so through your day, you're praying, you're seeking God. He wants to be part of your every moment. I wrote on here, he pray every day. The, the Lord Jesus told the disciples, Can you pray just can't you just pray for one hour? That's a good starting point. Pray an hour a day, right? But I thought, well, maybe it's more than that. Maybe God wants you to pray like every minute. Yeah, that's good. I, I pray every minute. I don't think I should really do that. But, you know, pastor, I'm just trying, you know. And then I thought, you know, it's not every minute. It's like every moment. Yeah. Like, you can think of two, especially ladies, you can think of three or four things at the same time, right? I mean, you can think about Jesus at the same time you're doing all your 20 tasks that you have in your head already, right? I mean, God doesn't do that, so he says, let's pray. What happens in our lives as you begin to pray Hour by hour, minute by minute, second by second, moment by moment, right? What happens is that you are, you recognize the presence of God. We're, we're talking about the presence of God, the glory of God. That's who we are. We're the glory of God in the earth. So we can have God's presence in us continuously, amen? And then you can be like this. <laughs> you can be happy all the time. Yeah. You know, I... Uh, yeah, God's doing a good good thing. Let's let's turn to uh, Psalm eighteen six. Say, Miss Sandy, you were, you quote, you memorized that, right? Can you quote it for us? Yeah, eighteen six or eight, one through six is what you said, right? One through six. Yeah. Okay, let's Miss Sandy's gonna help me this morning. She, I didn't tell her in advance, so. <laughs> but she's quoted last night, yeah, so she's an amazing lady. Yeah. Go ahead. I love you, O oh Lord, my strength. Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my redeemer. Is it my call? My God. My God is my. You have to help me. Okay. He is my shield. He is my shield and my horn. Lord of salvation. salvation, my stronghold. My oh. call on Him. He is, he is my refuge. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of praise. And I am saved from my enemies. And I am saved from my enemies. The cord of death entangles me. You go because I don't know that part. Uh, the cord of the grave. The cord of death entangles me. It overwhelms me. The of destruction overwhelm me. The cords of the grave. Coiled around me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. Yeah. You want me to stop? No, no, that's wow. good. So, that's pretty good. Praise <laughs> so, the Lord. Sandy's committed to memorizing scripture, so praise the Lord for that. That's a one way to be in the Word and help the we got the Holy Spirit recall to you when you need it, the Word of God. So as you're reading the Word of God and you're in the Word of God, um, and when you need it, the Holy Spirit will remind you of that Word, and you can use it in prayer in that time that you need it. Amen? And so, but this is the, the last part, verse 6 says, In my distress, I called to the Lord, I cried out my, to my God for help. And that is so powerful, because sometimes when we're distressed, like I get phone calls every once in a while. When I'm distressed, the first thing I do is call somebody that they have confidence in to help them. Right? Do we do that? Like something goes wrong, and also we call somebody that we know as our first thought instead of calling out to God. That's my only thought this morning. Is when we have when we get in that moment where we're distressed and things seem overwhelming, I want to encourage you, call out to the Lord. Yeah. Call out to the Lord. And he will answer you. He will comfort you. He'll be your refuge. He'll be your protector from the enemy. He will be a tower for you. He will protect you. Amen. So praise the Lord. So the first thing we should do in prayer is that we should we should call out to God uh, for help. Amen. Individually. And then there's all sorts of other prayers too we want to pray for. We want to thank him and praise him. But I'm just saying, when we get in that moment of distress. Also, he's called not only individually for us to pray, but he's also called us as leaders. Oh, let me read this one other verse. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 4. I almost missed this. This is good. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Uh, somebody go help them. 
Thank you. Oh, yeah, the amazing is happening. A lot of time. Praise the Lord. You've been through a lot this week. Verse 14 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the gone through heaven, has gone to heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we possess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as you are, yet knew no sin. Jesus was tempted every way you are and knew no sin. Come on. <laughs> Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. Amen. God wants to, you know, we don't have to hide our need from God. And when we stumble and we fall, right, believers, most of you are perfect, I know, but some of us are not. And so we can go to God because He knows our struggles. And He's saying, I sympathize with what you're going through. I know what's in your heart. I know what's in your, your, your mind right now. And would you come now to the, the throne of grace that He made a pathway through His death so we can go into God's mercy seats and receive the healing and the forgiveness and the mercy and all that we need when we come into God's presence. God, our Father, wants you to be in His presence. Can I say it this way? Continuously. Yes. Continuously. We don't have to be outside His presence anymore. We were when there was the old law, but now we can come into His presence now daily, moment by moment, Hour by hour, second by second, every thought held captive to the Word of God, we can be in God's presence because He wants to be part of your life. As a believer, when you said, yes, I believe Jesus Christ is my Lord, remember that moment when you said, I surrender my will to you, God? I'm going to start following you with all my heart, mind, body, and soul. When I remember that day, then God says, yeah, you are now in my presence always. I, you can never, ever leave my presence because I love you. You can come dirty and messed up and confused and anxious and all those things, but he's like a mother hen gathering you to himself so you can be in his presence every day. Hallelujah. God <laughs> wants you to be in his presence. I'm going to pick that up because it's going to bother me, so. <laughs> Sorry, it's how God made me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He not only knew that you, he needed to comfort you and you needed to be able to understand, he understands your weaknesses, but he knew that we were weak and he gave us a comfort to help us to not feel bad. He gave us the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and remind us of what Jesus did for us. Amen? The Holy Spirit comes and in encourages you to seek Him when you're in trouble. The Holy Spirit will comes and comforts you when you're distraught. The Holy Spirit, when you seek wisdom and knowledge, will lead you to all truth. The Holy Spirit guides us to the presence of God. Amen. Part of our movement is that we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is evident for you today. And so we believe in this verse that, that, is, that is part of the, the core of our, our, our movement is in, um, in um, um, Zechariah. No. Yeah, Zechariah 4, 6. Let's turn there. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. If you find it, somebody stand up and read it. Hallelujah.
saying, not by mind nor by power, but by my spirit, saying the Lord of hosts. So in Zechariah, if you read the chapter, the book, the Israel was in trouble and all these bad things happened to them. But God's going to bring them to deliver, right? And Zerubbabel helped lay the foundation of the temple. And he laid the foundation, uh, I believe, with prayer. Amen? And he says, you can't do this work without the power of the Spirit in you, right? Not by might, not by power, by anything we can do by ourselves or our own intelligence, but it's by the Holy Spirit. Do you imagine a church if we just relied on the Holy Spirit to be the foundation of the direction that God is giving us? Amen? Amen. Holy Spirit is going to lead us to truth. He's going to lead us to comfort. He's going to lead us to joy and peace, and He's going to overwhelm you. The Holy Spirit. So the foundation of our movement is this verse from, for a very long time, it says, not that used to be part of our, on our, our magazine that they put out every, every month, every week. And uh, it was part of, you know, a scripture verse that we, in our early church, that we read over and over. And it was just part of who we are. We rely on the Holy Spirit. We know we have to follow Jesus. Come on. The Holy Spirit is only going to teach us how to follow Jesus. Think about it. And how to move and in, in, in to wit, be a witness for him, for him. He's going to empower you to be a witness, as it says in Acts, for Him. So the Holy Spirit is a, helps us, empowers us to be a witness of Jesus to the world. The Holy Spirit enables us to do, use gifts that He allows to be a witness to people about who Jesus is. So when the Holy Spirit says, Hey, go over there and lay hands on that person and pray for them so they can be healed. It's not so you can get the credit. It's so that Jesus, that they'll be a follower of Jesus. Amen? When we have a, a word of prophecy or an encouragement from Scripture, it's for us to be encouraged to follow after Jesus so we can share salvation with a world that needs it. Amen? Praise the Lord. I want to share with you a couple different verses. Let's go to... Um, uh, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And this is, this is what I believe um, is going to help us, if we understand this, uh, to continue to move in this uh, newness that God is doing in our church and in our lives. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. We get, we're going to say, God, what all you have? I, I'm going to take off all my religion, I'm going to take off all that I know, and I'm going to move with you right now. What are you doing right now, God, in my life? And this is part of it to understand the scripture, is, is um, uh, when Peter addressed the crowd after the day of Pentecost, and the Spirit of God fell, and there was uh, people spoke in different languages and tongues, and, and people understood that, and they were giving praise to God. And then he talks about the prophecy that happened in Joel and the book of Joel, and this is in verse 17, says this, In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. What does that mean? All people, right? He didn't say just the Jewish people, he said all people. Everybody, every nation, every people group, he's going to pour out his spirit on. Can you say amen, get excited? Amen. Say, God's going to give you the gift of salvation. And he's going to give you another gift called the Holy Spirit. It's free. It's for you and me to receive. It's the Holy Spirit. Say, why is that so important? Because we, God doesn't just want us to be churchgoers. God wants us to be church doers. God doesn't want us to go to a place called a church. God wants us to be the church. Amen? God doesn't want us to just, uh, hey, uh, God just wants us to trust Him, amen? And that's why He gives the Holy Spirit. So He says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. So, what does that mean? I, I mean, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Mm -hmm. What is prophecy? Prophecy is an encouragement to the body of Christ. Yes. Amen? So, that's, what it's, that's why we change the order of service. So, when God says... Or we encourage you. So if you're through the week, you're praying and you're reading the scripture, and you say, "Hey, Pastor Bob or Pastor Andrew, hey, I got, I want to share this with the church. We're gonna, know we're gonna say most of the time, okay? Yeah. You know why? Because we're doing a new thing. Because before this time, I had to control everything. We had to control everything. It had to be done a certain way. You know, and now we're going to say, God is doing something bigger than what we can do. So if you have a word from the Lord, we don't want to say, no, you don't. <laughs> Unless it's not, then we'll tell you. 
Uh, Tina and I, Andrew, uh, Richard, we have a uh, gift of, of um, discernment. <laughs> what gift is that? Uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm just happy right now. Um, we have the gift of discernment, so sometimes Linda does too. So sometimes if you know you come up, and I, I don't want to make this the. I don't remember this part of the sermon, okay? This instruction. But sometimes you might be off, but we'll let you know. Is that okay? Amen. All right. So, but for the most part, we know that God's moving, and so we have to be open to that. All right. So that's just a little instruction. But I'm just saying, don't remember that over everything else. All right. So come. You have a word. Come. Share with us. We don't. And we don't. We don't know what God's doing in your life. What's so exciting right now is what was happening. I I know what's going on in almost everybody's lives right now. It's really cool because God is moving. People are wanting to be closer to him. So it's like, for me, as a pastor, I'm like, this is great. This is what I've been praying for. Like, God, move on your lives. Let them walk. You know, I want to hear more and more things that happen. It says, and then it says here, um, your young man will see visions, and your old man will dream dreams. Older is older than me, so I just know that um, <laughs> we're on the vision stuff more than the dreams. But I'm having kind of both right now, so I guess it's, I'm in the middle. Uh, <laughs> even on my servants, both men and women. Listen, there's no... See, God, everybody's equal in the eyes of God. Amen. Right? Amen. There's all nations, all equal. All people groups, all equal. Men, women, children, all equal. Because they can, all can prophesy. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine... I can imagine this. These little guys yeah. saying, I have a word from the Lord. Yeah. And then sharing it with you and us? Wow. When we were at the Brownsville Revival in Pensacola, Florida, back a long time ago, um, the children were praying for the lost in their, the chapel behind the main chapel. And they would show videos of the kids crying out to God for the lost. It was, wow, amazing. Wow. I just, that God can use anybody. And that's what the Word of God says. See, Acts was, God was doing a new thing, right? He says, the Old Testament is gone, and I'm doing a new thing. God's doing a new thing here in your lives, and He's doing a new thing in my life. He's doing a new thing in this church. We're doing a new thing. We're saying, we're going to stick to the gospel and teach you the gospel and what to learn the gospel and, and, and to digest who Jesus is. He, he loves you. He cares for you. He wants you to understand that the Holy Spirit was given to you as a gift to understand the fullness of God. It was free. All you have to do is ask. We had uh, such an amazing time Wednesday. As we said, God, I don't well, my will to be done, I want your will to be done. That was kind of the essence towards the end of the, as we pray. Lord, whatever you want to do in my life, do it. Change me to, I'm being baptized into Jesus. I'm submitting my whole life, submersing my whole life into him so I can be like him. Amen. Amen. Last night, Kurt shared this scripture verse. I want to go there. Can we go to First Thessalonians? I'm going to end with this. Is that okay? And maybe some time of reflection. Yeah. Um, do you mind, Kurt? Would you stand and read that again? Um, it was really powerful. I want to just. First Thessalonians. This is First Thessalonians chapter five, verses sixteen through twenty-four. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. <clears throat> May God himself, the God of peace, 
sanctify you through and through. May your whole heart, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The one who is faithful, he will do it. Hallelujah. Let's go back to verse 15. It says, make sure. I'm sorry, verse 16. It says, this, I wrote this out. I, I said, uh, be joyful always. <laughs> be joyful always. Why? How can we be joyful always? Because if you go back just a little bit, it says, uh, yeah, I'll, go with, I'll go with that. But you can read it. You go home and read verse 12 through 15. It says, be joyful always. And then it says, pray. This is a good instruction. Like, hey, everybody be happy. Everybody with a smile on your face. Come on, do it. Okay. <laughs> if you're German, do it. Hallelujah. Right? Be joyful always. Right? Be joyful. There's like a physical something that happens in your body when you're joyful. Matter of fact, it takes less muscles to smile than it does to frown. I've heard that. You guys heard that a million times already, right? Yeah. Be joyful. What if you were joyful at work during the most stressful moments of work? What's going to happen? People are going to say, What's wrong with you? <laughs> you're like, Nothing's wrong with me. There's not a thing wrong with me. I'm I'm trusting Jesus right now. We're going to get through this situation, and, and he's going to give you peace also. And they're going to like, right, they're going to walk away from you because they think you're crazy. Yeah. But that's all right. Because your joy brings a witness to who God is. Your joy brings a witness to who God is mm -hmm. in your life. I don't know why I always think of this same scripture over and over, and I think it's because we don't do it enough. Like, cast all your cares upon me, because I care for you. My yoke is easy, and my burdens are light. Your yoke is easy. I'm connected to Jesus. He's carrying the load. I'm just kind of going along for the ride. His will is greater than my will. Amen. I can trust you, Jesus, yes. through this time in my life. Mm -hmm. Amen. I love this part as instruction. It said, and then pray continuously. We just talked about that. Like, I don't know how I can do that. So what, what I'm learning is my life is not separated from Jesus. Amen. My Life. I don't have a church life, and I don't have a regular life. All my life is Jesus. Amen? That's what's changing in this church. Amen. All of my life, every moment, God is with me, and I know He is. I'm encouraged by it, so I can pray to Him continuously. That's what's changing. That's what's changing here. That's what's changing here. All my life, all my in the evening when I'm watching football, God is there with me. <laughs> right? In the morning when I get up, God is there with me. When I'm driving down University Avenue and it's fun, uh, God is with me, right? God is with you every moment of your day. When you're getting those children ready for school, God is with you. When you're going, oh my God, where is that? God is with you. Look at the checking account, and there's not enough money there. God is with you. And then, and, right? Whatever you're going, God is with you. When you go out there and it's below zero, and you turn the key, and the car don't start, God is with you, right? Right? How many get angry uh, sometimes uh, in that moment, and you're learning not to be angry because God is with me through that process, amen? And it says, give thanks in all circumstances. You can't argue with that. I wouldn't even say anything else. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So, what is the will of God? That you be joyful, that you pray continuously, and you give thanks for everything. That's the will of God. But what? I got all these issues. Of, should I do that? 
this, be joyful. <laughs> Pray continuously. Amen? Give thanks. And God will show you what to do. He's not going to hide anything from you. He wants you to succeed. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be joyful. But when circumstances come up where you can't be joyful, you pray continuously, right? Say, I can't be joyful. I, I'm thinking about a little Mason there going through all the things that he goes through. Pray for him. Will you? We'll pray for him together. We want to discuss if God continue to heal his body, right? Right? So it's kind of hard to be joyful as a mommy in that situation, right? But God's there with her. God's in presence with her. God comforts her by his spirit, amen? Yeah. God is with her. And then you, when, when a brother or sister comes along and prays with you, there's strength in that. Amen. Do not put out the spirit's fire. The enemy of your soul will tell you everything we're talking about today is not true. Mm -hmm. Enemy will tell you that you don't need to pray. You can, you can handle this situation yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's a lie. You can't handle yeah. yourself. That's yeah. why God gave you the comforter. Right. God gave you the Holy Spirit to help you in every situation of life. That's why you need God's help. You can't do life on your own. God knows that. And then we, we want to be witnesses for Him. We want to share our faith, but we're so weak in that because we're afraid of what people are going to think of us. You need the power of Spirit to help you be a witness. You need a help, the Holy Spirit to continue to fight, uh, uh, remind you how powerful you are in God. Because it's given the same authority that Jesus had, He gave to you. Think about that for a second. Yeah. Right? And He put the world under His feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, don't get me excited. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He put all authority. You don't have to listen to the devil. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't have to listen to those negative thoughts. You don't have to. No. God's given you authority over that, not because of you, because of what He did. Yes. Right? Because of the cross. He gave you that authority, if you say amen. Amen. <laughs> All authority is given you. All right. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not, uh, uh, do, do not treat prophecy with contempt. So when you listen to the word prophecy from the, from, right? Understand, it's not, it, if you want to study it out when pastor says something or, or somebody said, do it. Mm -hmm. Understand it. God's not going to hide nothing from you. Just don't go, that's not true. <laughs> I don't believe in that. They never taught me that. You might have heard something new today. Amen. So good, study it out. There's no private interpretation of the Word of God. We all can have the same understanding. God doesn't want to hide anything from you. That's right. Amen? That's right. Come on. God wants to give you all authority. Right. Hallelujah. Power in the Word. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Say amen. amen. Test everything. How do you test everything? The Word of God says, test everything. Is it from God? Does it line up with the Word? Amen? Does the Spirit bear witness with your spirit that what was being said is true? Yeah. The Holy Spirit will never, when something's wrong, I'll tell you what, right now, in this room, if something's out of order, everyone in here will know. That's because right. the same Spirit that's in you is in me. That's right. Amen? So when you think, well, that's not right. Remember we had that young man come? I want to testify, remember Angel? <laughs> right? And everybody in the room knew it was out of order, right? But we handled it. We loved on that little that man, right? The young man. And, and he, pretty, he left. But it, we could have caused disruption. We didn't allow it to cause disruption. We just loved on him, right? Yeah. And he said, okay, but everybody in the room knew that instant that that was out of order. But that's okay. We all know. Because when you move in the power of God, the enemy doesn't like it. That's right. So we just keep slapping him down. All right? Amen. Keep slapping them down. You got the power. You got the power. No, we ain't going to have that. We're, we're going to pray for Pastor Bob and Pastor Tina. We're going to pray for Pastor Andrew and Pastor Rachel, right? We're going to pray for the leadership team on this, in this church. We're going to pray for that God, that the enemy doesn't affect them. We need you guys to pray, man, for us. And we're praying for you, right? So we have that we have that, that unity in the body of Christ. We're praying for one another and encouraging one another as we see it happening this morning so we can go out and do the things that God calls us to do. Right. We need to do the will of God. Hallelujah. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through, all the way through your thought and everything in your head itself. May you be full or whole of the Spirit, soul, body, be, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be blameless. Yeah. No blame, no, no. guilt. No. You repented of your sins, it's over. Repented of our will, God, that your will be done, it's over. Now we're walking in the Spirit and we're doing the will of God. We're being yeah. a good mommy. We're witnessing. We're sharing Jesus. We're loving on each other. Practice in the room right here. Love on each other here. I love when you got, I hear um, when people are doing different things. 
right? I don't gotta say anything, but like I hear something, hey, I wanna go do this, I wanna go help this person, I wanna help them. I'm like so full of joy because I don't have to do it, you know. Just it's, but the body's loving on each other, they're helping each other, right? That's why we want to start up another missional community. So we have, we touch more people and we can touch more uh, unbelievers and we just I don't know, God's just doing a great new thing. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? I'm ready to put on my, uh, I was in the Marine Corps, I'm ready to put on my combat gear, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to, I'm like, come on, let's go. We're going to take this city for Jesus, amen? We're going to do it. But we're going to do one person at a time, one family at a time, one relation at a time, one, one poor person at a time, one rich person at a time, one educated person, every, everybody. We just God, whoever God puts in your path, if the will of God is, is that you be a witness, share, love, bring them, teach them. Give to them. Do whatever it takes for them to come to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I saw a smile right there. I saw that, David. I saw your smile. Hallelujah. May your whole spirit, soul, uh, through and through, uh, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it for you Hallelujah. and for me and for this whole place. God is going to do it. We're going to change. We're going to change. This is the prayer this, this morning. The prayer is this. God, change whatever is in my life that hindering me to do your will. And I know this. The Spirit of God has already told you what that is. Because we have to change. Jesus, before he went to the cross, which was the most horrific death that the Roman, the, the, the torture that could happen in mankind at that time, just horrible death that the, they would just bring him to the edge of death and then bring him back and bring him to the edge of death and bring him back. And it was torture, torture. It was horrible. Before that, he knelt in the garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane. Did I say it right? And he now. Now, lay down, he spent time with Father. And he said, let this cup pass from me. He said, but Father, your will be done, not mine. I know this, God's not asking you to die today for him, but he's asking you to be alive for him. Amen? So let's do that today. Can we just take a, let's, uh, so let's stand. Do we have some music? Um, let's stand together. Let's close with this. In fact, I will just open up the altars. Let's come down here. I want you to add an act of surrender to God. Say, God, I want your will to be done in my life, not my will. And whatever the Lord reveals to you, just pray and ask God to help you to, to let go of that. Just take five minutes. The kids are downstairs. I'll be good for another five minutes. Can we just come? Let's come from your chairs right now. Let's come down to the altar and let's ask the Lord. Lord, let your will be done in my life, not my will.